Hi, my name is Patrick Rouse and I'm an Enterprise Solution Architect with Quest Software. Today I'm demonstrating rapid provisioning of Hyper-V virtual desktops using Quest V Workspace and Microsoft System Center Virtual Machine Manager. What this means is that instead of manually creating virtual machines, V Workspace will automate the process from a single image and each VM will consume only a fraction of the disk space that the parent virtual hard disk consumes. In my case, my parent for Windows 7 VM template is approximately 8.5 gigabytes in size and we can see that here. But the VMs that I will provision will use up less than one gigabyte of space. And what we can take a look at is some of the VMs that I've created previously. And if we look at the space that they've consumed, about 880 megabytes of space. And these machines are already been sys prepped and joined to Active Directory and powered on. So let's go ahead and look at the process. I'm going to go ahead and open up the V Workspace Management Console. And I will go to my computer group. So I have a group of Windows 7 desktops. Says I have two computers in this group, and none of them are turned on. I'm going to go ahead and add a few more computers. At this point, I'll go ahead and create uh, three more virtual desktops. I'll select Rapid Provisioning, which means a new differencing disk will be created for each new VM and the differencing disk will be based on a parent virtual hard disk. So here's my parent virtual hard disk, the date it was created, where the VHD is stored. It's recommended that these are stored on a uh, fast disk, so you have high IOPS, um, preferably on an SSD drive if you have one. To show me my available volumes for provisioning where the new virtual machines will be deployed to, um, in this case, I'm just going to deploy them all to one volume, so I'm going to deselect my, my second volume, and I'm going to deploy them all on this D drive. This will allow me to customize the first time setup, the mini setup, um, after sysprep has been run. So the VM that I'm deploying from has already been sysprep, but we can um, slipstream in a, a new on a 10.xml file that will customize the setup. So here I've got a uh, Windows 7 sysprep that's been customized. Now these are this sysprep is actually created inside of the workspace and then when the machine is provisioned we dynamically insert the on a 10.xml into the virtual machine manager database. So here I'm joining the machine to Active Directory, placing it in an OU of my choosing. So here I can select the OU where I want to place the VM. So it's just queries Active Directory and I can select you know wherever I want to put the machine. I'm going to create a new local admin account on the virtual desktop. I'm going to disable the Windows firewall. I'm going to select my regional settings. I'm also uh, I've set a run once task to disable the default disk defrag that happens when Windows 7 is powered on. And I'm going to go ahead and cancel my changes here since I didn't make any changes. At this point I have the option to start building the machines now or to schedule it for a time in the future. I'm going to kick off the job now. And here it shows the three virtual machines that are going to be created. And when I click finish, a job will be sent over to Virtual Machine Manager to create the virtual desktops. So here we'll see that I have an uh, in-progress status notification, and this will be updated once we get notification back for Virtual Machine Manager. So I'm going to go switch over to VMM to show you what's happening inside of Virtual Machine Manager. So I'll go and I'll switch to the Virtual Machines view. And we'll see here that my new Virtual Machines are being spun up. So we'll see here whether we have the job status, and this job status will be sent over to to the VWorkspace Management Console. So VWorkspace will pull Virtual Machine Manager for the updates. So if I go into virtual into the VWorkspace Management Console, we'll see here that we're getting the um, the task status from Virtual Machine Manager. Now it typically takes about a minute before the VMs will be available until they're powered on for the first time. And it's about when it should be right about now on this machine. So if you're actually sitting at the console of the Hyper-V server, you'll, you'll actually hear the device insert notification when the when the virtual machine gets initialized and gets when the disk gets mounted. So I usually just wait for that sound, and then I can connect to my VM. 
So I see here the connect to virtual machine, and then I'll see the machine powering on for the first time. Now when you're testing, um, I like going through this process, that way you can see what's going on. Uh, if you have any problems, like maybe your DHCP server isn't working, or your sysprep wasn't uh, set up correctly, you can watch the machine boot up and see the process. That way if anything goes wrong, you can do some debugging to fix your problem. But in this case, I've done this many, many, many times, and I know that it works. So um, behind the scenes, you can see this down here on the bottom, System Center Virtual Machine Manager. You can see all the different things that it goes through to create the virtual machine. So the actual creation of the VM in this case only takes about a minute. It's the actual um, first time setup after running sysprep that takes the time. So if we go back into here, we'll see the machine is starting up. And it will take a few minutes before it goes through. It will um, determine what hardware is attached to the VM. It will join it to Active Directory, reboot, and then join the vWorkspace farm. So if I look inside of vWorkspace, I've got real-time feedback from Virtual Machine Manager. Now we also see some other things inside of here. I have the VM host load. This is a load evaluator that I've set up against my Hyper-V servers to tell me how loaded the hosts are. So when we actually send users to virtual machines, we can actually send them to the least loaded Hyper-V server. So we do this by querying the, um, querying the load on the Hyper-V servers using WMI. We also have here, we have the power state of each of the virtual machines, and these are all um, updated dynamically. We can turn the refresh on or off. I also have the MAC address of the virtual machines. If the machines were um, persistently assigned to a user, you would see the user's Active Directory name here. Um, if a user is connected, we would see the client device that they're coming from, the client IP address, the logon state, whether they're logged on or off. Um, if we set an access timetable, it would specify you know, that there is a timetable that's assigned. Uh, PN Tools version. This is the Quest tools for the managed desktop. These are the RDP extensions that, that, that Quest adds, as well as universal printer driver, um, single sign on engine, multi monitor capabilities, those type of things. And then finally, we have the operating system and the operating system service pack. Now, what this allows you to do is it allows you to search through the vWorkspace Management Console based on any of these any of these items that I have listed here. So if we go back to Virtual Machine Manager, I'll go back and look at my desktop. I see here that it's still booting up. So it usually takes a few minutes, but in our testing, we've been able to build a thousand virtual machines in about an hour. So the process is very, very quickly, very, very quick. Um, also, um, an end user typically would not have to wait for this to happen because V Workspace has the capability to spin up the virtual machines when needed. So we can actually tell V Workspace to dynamically add virtual machines as they're needed. So if I go into the um, auto expand option, I can enable auto expansion. What this means is I can always have an additional number of desktops available. So I can say um, I always want to have um, five virtual machines available at any given time and maybe I want to, only want to have 25 VMs in this group. Now in production I may I would typically set the maximum number of computers in this group to the amount of VMs that my backend infrastructure can handle. And like I said, this this number right here would be the number of additional virtual machines I want available at any given time. So if I have 10 users logged on and I have this number set to 5, that means it would have an extra 5 machines available for new users to log on. So when, new, when this number gets depleted, the system will automatically create new VMs in the background. So at this point, let's go ahead and take a look at the new VMs that have been created, and we'll see how much disk space they've used. So here I've got uh, VMs 33 and 34, and if I go inside of here, I'll see the size of the new VHD. So we're using about 650 megs of space, but by the time they've actually been logged on the first time, it's usually right around 900 megs. Uh, I'll see the same thing with number 34. So that's it. You can see that my VMs are now coming online. I'm now getting feedback from Virtual Machine Manager and from the services that are running inside of my new VMs. 
we'll see this initialization task. Um, this is when the machine actually joins joins the V workspace farm, and we'll see now inside of Virtual Machine Manager that my new VMs are online. So that's it. That's uh, rapid provisioning with V workspace and System Center Virtual Machine Manager.